Hi, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion. If you're tired of looking at an ugly ironing board cover, I'll show you how to create a new one in today's tutorial. If you're like me and do a lot of pressing, your ironing board cover has probably seen better days. You could purchase a new cover, but even better, you can easily make your own and make it one of a kind. The best part about making your own ironing board cover is choosing a fun fabric. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are some of the supplies I'm going to be using for this project. The first thing is you're going to need your ironing board, the one that desperately needs to be covered. I'm just doing a small one. If you're doing a large ironing board, these same concepts can apply. You need some cotton fabric. I highly recommend using 100% cotton because you want something that is going to be able to handle a high heat. The amount depends on how big your ironing board is. I would just measure the length, add about six inches to that, and that should tell you how much fabric you need. Now I'm using all-purpose thread as well, so if you already have that, great. Some fabric scissors, paper scissors. I'm using single folded bias tape, the width is half inch. And then I'm also using elastic. So for this, even if you're doing a large ironing board, you could probably just get away with one package like I am. For the elastic, for a large ironing board, you would need at least three yards, and I'm using quarter inch in width, but you can also use three eighths inch in width for elastic as well. As an optional item, I have some hook and loop fastener. So this, you just need a little bit, and again, it is optional, and I would just get enough to go across the width of your ironing board. I have a fabric marker, a pencil, a sewing gauge, some straight pins up here, and then I have my pattern paper and my sewing machine. The first thing I'm going to do is take my ironing board and lay it upside down on my pattern paper so then I can draw just an outline of the board. So I'm not going to worry about these legs. If I need to get them out of the way, I can just move them up like this. That way it's a little bit easier. I'm just using a pencil to draw the outline on my pattern paper. If you do not have pattern paper that's big enough to, for your ironing board, what you can do is instead of paper, just take the fabric that you're going to be covering the ironing board with and lay this down on the wrong side of the fabric and then just use your fabric marker to draw directly onto the fabric. The benefit of doing it on the paper though is if I eventually need to make another cover of my ironing board, I already have the pattern done so then I can save myself at least a step in doing that. Another thing you can do if it's easy enough is if you can remove the previous cover on your ironing board, you can also use that as a pattern. Mine's kind of stapled in, so I'm just gonna leave it and just put my new cover on top of it, but you can also do that as well. Once you have the basic outline of the board, you're then going to add a little bit more to it because we want to account for not only the width of the board, but then also it wrapping around to the back. So mine is fairly small. That's about a half inch that I would add past my original line. But for the larger boards, you're usually gonna do at least an inch, maybe even more than that. So I'm gonna do the width plus whatever I want to go on the back, usually a couple of inches. So for me, I'm gonna add about two and a half to three inches, which I'm gonna draw outside of my original line. The solid line is my original outline, and then the dash line is the line I'm going to cut out. So this accounts for the extra fabric that I'm including for going over the side and then going over the back. Use your pattern to then cut out your fabric for your new cover. If you're using directional fabric like I am, just make sure that you place it in the direction that you want it to go on your board. Now, if you take off the old cover and you wanna replace or add some sort of padding to be underneath your fabric, I would highly recommend using 100% cotton batting or the insulated fleece like they use for creating pot holders. Again, you're going to wanna to use something that can handle extreme heat. So you can make it about the size of the ironing board, maybe a little bit bigger, and then just place it on top, and we could put the cover on top of that. Next, we're gonna be adding our single folded bias tape to the edge all the way around the perimeter of our new cover, because we're gonna be using this as the casing in order to put our elastic in it. So you can see that I'm looking at the wrong side of the bias tape, and there's a fold on this side and a fold on this side. I'm just gonna, for now, unfold one side and if you wanna lightly press it, you can. 
And I'm just gonna start at a point on the cover, it really doesn't matter where. Now for this part, I'm going to take this end here, you can see I unfolded it all the way, and I'm just gonna fold it over about a quarter of an inch, making sure that I'm lining up the raw edge here. And I'm going to start pinning it into place and I'm just gonna go all the way around, just like this, and just start pinning it. Once you get around the whole way, you can just overlap the two ends by about a quarter of an inch, and you don't have to fold this one. You can just overlap it and then pin it into place. Make sure that you place your bias tape right side to right side with your fabric. And if you're doing a really large ironing board, you may have to have two packages of bias tape and then just sew one into the other, just to make sure it's going to be long enough. Next, we're gonna take it to our sewing machine and we're gonna stitch right into the crease on the top edge of our bias tape. For stitching in the crease, I'm just using a regular length straight stitch and I'm going all the way around. And don't forget to overlap your stitches or do a back stitch just to hold everything in place. Now you're gonna take all your bias tape and you're gonna fold it over to the wrong side like this. So you'll just have a little bit of your fabric just showing on the wrong side. And then you're going to start pinning this in a place all the way around. After you finish pinning, it should look like this on the wrong side. So all the bias tape is on the wrong side. And if I was to flip this over on the right side, you don't see any bias tape. So this is going to create our casing for the elastic. I need to make sure that I leave an opening in order to insert my elastic in once I start sewing it, because the next step is to sew this bottom edge of the bias tape so that finishes off the casing. So I just putting some pins here that are shaped like X's. So I'm leaving myself a note on where I want that opening to be. And it could really be any place. It really doesn't matter. I'm just doing it on one of the straight edges. So I would start sewing down here, right on the bottom edge again of the bias tape and continue this way, go all the way around. And then once I make my way here, I'm going to stop and you're gonna do a back stitch at this point and this point, and there's no stitches in between. And that way we have our opening. I'm still doing a straight stitch for this and you wanna get as close to the edge of the bias tape as possible because if I start sewing towards this direction, the casing might be too small for my elastic. And this is especially true if you're using a wider elastic, which is the 3 eighths of an inch. Put a safety pin on the end of your elastic. So then we can start putting it into our casing. And you want to just kind of hold the safety pin with one hand and then I gather the fabric or the casing on the other and then I just pull with the left hand and it starts going through. The amount of elastic really depends on how big your ironing board is. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on as much elastic as I can just to get to the other side. And then I'm going to put a safety pin through both elastics that are coming out the end before trimming or anything like that because I'm going to start fitting it onto my ironing board and that's gonna be the final deciding point in how much elastic I'm going to need. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and then I sh I'll show you what to do to fit it onto your board. I'm going to fit the new cover onto my board and it may be a little bit loose or it may be a little bit tight. So if it's tight, it just means you need to feed more elastic into your casing. But if it's loose, I'm just gonna kind of cinch it up even more by pulling my elastic so it gets a nice fit on this. And then once it's to the level that I want it to be at, I'm just gonna overlap the elastic close to where my opening is, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a straight pin or my safety pin and just kind of pin them both together so they're not gonna come undone and I can slip this off again. So this is where my elastic overlapped each other after I cinched it. So you can see I put a straight pin in and then I just cut off the excess elastic. I'm then gonna pull it out, pull the elastic more out of the casing so you have enough room to put this underneath your sewing machine and sew it and I'm just gonna do some stitches going across the elastic to hold it together. To sew through your elastic, you can do a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. Just make sure to go back and forth a few times because we really wanna make sure this isn't going to come undone. 
stretch out your casing so that the slack, that's the elastic, goes back into the casing. And then once it's all the way in there, you can go ahead and finish stitching the bottom of this bias tape close. I slip my new cover back on my ironing board and at this point it actually looks pretty great. So if you want to be done with it at this point, then you're done with it. The only part I don't like is my fabric seems to be pretty loose right here in the center. So I'm going to use a hook and loop fastener on the back just to tighten it up. With my cover still on, I flip it over so I'm looking at the bottom. And somewhere in the center I'm just going to put a strap across of the hook and loop fastener. So I'm just going to, you can actually just measure this and then do it in the middle or you can just eyeball it. So I'm going to do one here and then I can use a ruler and do a mark over on this side as well and just mark it. So that way I know where to sew my hook and loop fastener. The amount that I'm doing is if I have it so it's going to where my stitches are from when I sew the bias tape, I want it to go a little bit past the halfway point. So if my halfway point is here, I'm going at least an inch and a half past that because if I sew this on this side, I want to make sure they overlap and I can tighten it as much as I want to tighten it. You also have to make sure that you sew it on correctly. So if I have, let's say, the rough side of the hook and loop going up, when I sew this side over here, I have the soft side going down towards it. So you don't have them both going face up or right side up, otherwise it's not going to work. So that's why I just kind of keep it on so I can eyeball it and maybe stick them together and then I can pin each side into place. Once it's pinned, you can go ahead and remove the cover again so you, then you can stitch it. And you can just do a straight stitch again, just do a few straight stitches here on the end or do a couple of zigzag stitches and then that's it. And look at that, my ironing board looks as good as new and ready to be back in action. There's no reason to buy a new board when it's so easy to recover an old one. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.